Hello, knowledge seekers. In this episode of 20 Minute Books, we delve into The End of Power by Moises Naim, a penetrating book that explores the seismic shift in how power is acquired, exercised, and maintained in the modern world. Naim, with a formidable background as Venezuela's former trade minister and executive director of the World Bank, editor in chief of foreign policy, and a fellow at the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace, dissects the weakening of what he defines as power, once tightly held by the elite and now diffused across myriad actors. Within the pages of The End of Power, we uncover the myriad ways in which revolutions in technology, business, politics, and human behavior have fragmented the concentration of power giving rise to a landscape where it is more decentralized and democratized than ever before. Naeem argues that this new distribution of power presents challenges to existing governments and institutions, compelling a reconsideration of how we govern, manage power structures, and make decisions that affect our societies. This book is a must-listen for anyone captivated by the currents of foreign policy those engaged with the nuances of cultural and social phenomena, and scholars or enthusiasts in the field of political science. As power's tectonic plates shift beneath our feet, the end of power provides the necessary framework and insight to understand and navigate this new, unprecedented terrain. Join us today as we explore the crumbling of ancient bastions of power and the rise of an emergent paradigm where power is not stockpiled but rather shared among us all. The End of Power, From Boardrooms to Battlefields and Churches to States, Why Being in Charge Isn't What It Used to Be. Introduction. The Shifting Sands of Power, How and Why the Dynamics Have Changed. Once upon a time, The idea of who held the world's reins seemed clear. The President of the United States stood as a paragon of unrivaled power, steering the ship of global politics and influence. But fast forward to our current age, and this picture blurs into something unrecognizable. Governments globally, once the unshakable pillars of power, now tremble as the ground beneath them shifts. History's pages turning from the fall of symbolic walls to the eruption of revolutions like the Arab Spring, have chronicled a stark metamorphosis. Power is no longer what it used to be. This metamorphosis is not secluded in the world of politics. It permeates every stratum of society, be it the mass media, spiritual institutions, military forces, or even non-profit organizations. There's been an evident diffusion of influence. Where once these entities stood alone as concentrated powerhouses, they now find themselves amongst a multitude of others, each wielding its slice of authority. It's the dawning of an era signaling the end of power as it was once known. In teasing apart the threads of this compelling narrative, we can explore the profound impacts of power's decay. Imagine the iconic brands and celebrities falling from grace almost overnight or the seismic shifts in cultural norms across societies that once seemed immutable. Even in warfare, the underdogs now find themselves not just with a fighting chance, but often holding the upper hand against Goliaths. As we unravel this story, insights emerge, offering a crystal clear understanding of why once dominant forces like multinational corporations and renowned public figures can now be toppled in mere moments. Why societal trends such as falling marriage rates in the Middle East signal deeper undercurrents of change, and how military tactics have evolved to favor the smaller, more agile players in the field. Unpack these concepts, and you'll be on the path to comprehending the profound implications of power's transformation in our modern world. Part 1 The Crumbling Towers of Influence How the Nature of Power Has Shifted. In cities across the globe, from the bustling streets of Wall Street to the symbolic squares where history unfolds, voices have risen in protest. The core of their discontent? They see a world where the 1% amass wealth and clout, 
seemingly becoming more potent by the day. Prophets of international affairs have long raised alarms about shifting tides, such as America's waning dominance and China's ascent. But beneath these visible waves lies a profound seismic shift in the very underpinnings of power itself. Let's delve into the essence of power. It's the leverage to influence others' actions, whether through parental authority or the charismatic pull of leaders like Barack Obama, who galvanized youth in the 2008 elections. Power is inherently relational, but the once mighty bulwarks that upheld the influential and staved off the rise of rivals have started to erode. Consider the vast array of barriers that have fortified these positions of power, mighty militaries, control over critical resources, financial empires, the allure of prestige brands, spiritual leaders' once unassailable authority, and the intricate dance of political rulemaking. The journey to power involves surmounting these formidable barriers, yet these bastions of influence have been wobbling, a trend growing more evident over the past 30 years. Money now zips across borders with ease. Military hardware and tactical knowledge are ever more accessible. Academic knowledge spreads, free from traditional ivory towers. The result? Once dominant entities find their grip loosening, their influence fluttering away, and sometimes vanishing in an instant. Imagine the behemoth that was Rupert Murdoch's news corporation, its fortress of credibility crumbling overnight. The golfing icon Tiger Woods saw his public esteem plummet just as swiftly. These aren't isolated tales, but signs of a deeper pattern. One need only look to the drawn-out conflicts like Vietnam or the War on Terror to witness the frailty of even the most daunting military force. But this prompts a burning question. Why is the fabric of power undergoing such a profound transformation? Part 2. The Paradox of Plenty. More isn't always easier to manage. Envision a world burgeoning with abundance. This isn't a fantasy, but our reality. In the modern tableau, nations have multiplied from the count in the 1940s, growing fourfold. The wealth of emerging economies has surged, as has the dizzying array of products jostling for attention on the global market. But this numerical growth isn't limited to possessions or political boundaries. It's our life itself that has leaped ahead in quality. People are living longer, healthier lives with dramatically improved life expectancies and falling rates of death from illnesses and conflicts. Education has cast its light wider than ever, with literacy rates climbing and digital connections wrapping around the globe, linking people in numbers previously unfathomable. Yet with this multiplicity comes a new challenge. The more we have, the more unwieldy it becomes to wield control. No longer impoverished and desperate, the masses, now more educated and connected, are harder to rein in. Exploitation loses its grip when individuals aren't scraping by for their every need and can vocalize their demands to those who aspire to lead. The sheer volume of information, consumer goods, and life choices spreading before us means that no single domain can be tightly controlled. When individuals hold the reins over decisions big and small, from the marketplace to political booths, from their media consumption, to their personal networks, their movements, and their beliefs, they become a force too diffuse for easy governance. This leaves the powerful in a quandary, riddled with questions. How can you cultivate loyalty in an age where options are limitless? What use is coercion when it comes with a hefty price tag, both ethical and practical? And how does one assert dominance when the populace is less reliant, less vulnerable, and altogether more empowered? These are the puzzles that those seeking to maintain their power must now contend with, seeking answers in a world where control slips like sand through one's fingers. Part 3. The Unstoppable Tide of Global Movement Picture the Berlin Wall, the impenetrable barrier of the Cold War era, designed to prevent the citizens of East Germany from escaping to the West's promises of a better life. It stood not just as a structure of concrete and steel, but as a symbol of state control, diving into the lives of citizens who, given the chance, would have leapt at the opportunity to seek prosperity beyond its shadow. 
Fast forward to today, and such barriers are rendered virtually ineffective. Gone are the days when walls could keep the restless tide of humanity at bay. In our age, people, products, money, and ideas traverse the globe at astonishing velocities and diminishing costs. Consider the realm of air travel, where transcontinental flights are within the grasp of many, their prices a mere fraction of what they were decades ago. Cargo ships crisscross oceans at rates inconceivable in the 1950s, and the cost of transferring money plummets. United Nations figures reveal a staggering 214 million people traversed national borders in 2010, a 37% increase compared with two decades earlier. The remittances sent by these migrants eclipse global foreign aid by a factor of five, sending ripples through economies and upending traditional governmental controls. This new era of mobility leaves governing bodies grappling with diminished influence. Think back to East Germany. Once residents fled, they were barred from returning, their exposure to Western ideology quarantined. Today, in sharp contrast, expatriates often engage in their homeland's political processes, casting their votes from afar, as seen with Turks in Germany, Mexicans in the US, or migrants from Sudan and Senegal. This era empowers individuals with a potent form of protest. Voting with their feet. Discontent with their situation, be it national, corporate or religious, people can now seek out new horizons with unprecedented ease. This was the very power that East Germans wielded in 1989 when they surged across the border, toppling the socialist government within mere months. In our interconnected world, mobility amounts to a near uncontrollable variable long-standing walls crumbling in the face of the relentless human desire for movement and change. Part 4. Challenging Traditions A world where nothing is beyond scrutiny. Society's compass regarding what truly matters has spun in new directions, and it continues to turn. Empowered by the rise of a budding middle class, what were once developing countries now contend with a citizenry whose expectations climb above mere survival. They seek not just the basics, but the greater liberties of life. Thus, the spread of liberal values, like individual freedom, the push for transparency, rights to property, and the pursuit of fairness, has woven through cultures, altering the fabric of societies worldwide. For centuries, institutions like marriage stood unassailable, viewed as the zenith of personal commitment, a sanctified bond whose breach spelled dishonor. Now, within the span of mere decades, this belief teeters on the brink of being antiquated. Divorce rates climb not only in the Western world, where liberalism has long been the norm, but also in places like Kuwait, with its 37% divorce rate, and the United Arab Emirates at 26%, underscoring deep shifts even within traditionally conservative societies. This burgeoning appetite for liberal values twines with a diminishing faith in those at the helm. The United States tells its own tale. Once upon the 1960s, about three quarters of Americans trusted their government to do what's right the majority of the time. Fast forward to recent years, and that belief plummets to a meager 20 to 35 percent, a stark verdict for a nation built on democratic choice. The crescendo of this distrust reached its zenith with the Arab Spring in 2011, when autocratic regimes that once seemed as permanent as the pyramids faced insurrections from their own people. Leaders and dynasties, cosseted by decades of unchallenged rule, found themselves ousted, fighting bloody civil strife or in exile. These seismic uprisings underscore the reality. In today's world, everything that can face a question will and the shockwaves alter power's landscape irreversibly. Part 5. Democratizing Influence. The Dilution of Political Might. Imagine a room where every person's voice is heard in a decision. The more voices, the more diluted each becomes. This principle is transforming the political landscape, impacting the might of nations and their leaders alike. Layers of governmental power are eroding as countries find themselves partaking in an intricate dance of power sharing. Sovereignty, 
once jealously guarded, is increasingly a collective affair. Within nations, democracies spreading wings result in power being parceled out among more hands. Cast back to the year 1947, and there existed a mere 67 independent nations. In stark contrast, the modern United Nations roster boasts 193 sovereign states. The 1970s saw autocracies outnumber democracies by a two-to-one margin. Today, the scales have tipped in democracy's favor with a four-to-one advantage. This sea change comes with a shift towards more frequent elections, transferring greater sway to voters and placing political figures under the constant gaze of public judgment. The drumbeat of elections keeps leaders uneasy, their political longevity hanging on the whims of their constituents. Further complicating the political jigsaw is the rising fragmentation of political organizations. Leaders find themselves restrained, encircled by a multitude of players, each wielding influence, capable of exerting pressure well beyond the confines of established political institutions. The partitions that once isolated the political elite from the masses have crumbled, toppled by the rush of technological and communicative advances that arm nearly anyone with the tools to enter and disrupt the political discourse. The time it once took to unravel a presidential scandal, as with Nixon's Watergate, is compressed in the digital era where scandals kindle at a click and government insiders can catapult secrets into the public domain. Alongside this transparency surge, the trust voters place in their elected officials wanes while those same officials keenly grasp the peril sinister shadows cast by digital exposure. Their actions, ever scrutinized, are measured and reserved, eating away at their ability to respond decisively to crises, inadvertently stoking the flames of their own ineffectuality. A vicious cycle diluting their power and reshaping the dynamics of political authority. Part 6. From underdogs to potent challengers. The rise of micropowers in global conflict. The world stage brims with tales of insurgencies and guerrilla factions, yet what's striking today isn't their mere presence, it's their potency. These so-called micropowers, despite their modest means, are now formidable contenders against far mightier adversaries, a mismatch in resources belied by their influence. Arms and military savvy, once the exclusive assets of state soldiers, have flooded into the hands of non-state actors. Groups like Al-Qaeda or Islamic State have unnervingly easy access to tools of destruction capable of taking down aircraft, sinking vessels, and unleashing chaos. Remarkably, the havoc these weapons can wreak stands in stark contrast to their low cost. The sacrosanct realm of combat training has similarly decentralized. Gone are the days where military prowess was the sole province of state-endorsed warriors. Now, insurgent camps in Syria, ideological schools in London, and tech hubs in Tehran cultivate those skills, chipping away at states' monopoly over martial expertise. These shifts have tilted the scales in asymmetrical warfare, empowering micropowers to strike effectively at the Goliaths of the world. In the 19th century, the weaker party claimed victory in a scant 11.5% of conflicts. Fast forward to the latter half of the 20th century, and those odds have leaped to 55%. A significant factor is the blurring of combatant and civilian identities. Traditional armies, identifiable by their uniforms and equipment, are easy targets compared to the elusive fighters mingled within urban landscapes and guerrilla campaigns. The challenge of distinguishing friend from foe renders conventional military might awkward and less effective. Beyond the battlefield, micropowers have uncovered new diplomatic arsenals. Small states within larger coalitions like the European Union wield veto power that can deadlock decisions, enabling even the diminutive Luxembourg to stall progress. Moreover, the age-old institution of steadfast alliances is yielding to more transient, goal-specific coalitions assembled ad hoc for pressing immediate objectives. This dynamic arrangement reflects a strategic agility, allowing smaller entities to exert outsized influence on the international stage. 
Part 7. Business Behemoths and Davids. The Changing Tides of Corporate Power. We've peered into the kaleidoscope of civil society's shifting power dynamics, but what of the corporate kingdom? It too has been riding the waves of change. Let's step back to a time when Goliaths of commerce, with their vast array of wares and global reach, could effortlessly eclipse their lesser rivals. With coffers to delve into for technological investment and a spread of branches to balance their books, these titans stood unassailable. Investors flocked to them, banking on their reputation as safe harbours for capital, while consumers clung to the familiar emblems of established brands, wary of untested newcomers. A classic instance would be the rise of Chiquita, once merely a banana among many, but transformed through savvy marketing into the epitome of tropical fruit. Such was the power of branding that United Fruit Company even adopted Chiquita as its namesake. Yet, the ramparts that once shielded these corporate colossi are crumbling. Access to knowledge has democratized. Technologies have become affordable. And the playing field levels as smaller entities adopt tactics once exclusive to their mammoth counterparts. The advent of crowdfunding and similar financial instruments bestows a once unimaginable fiscal agility upon these corporate Davids. They dance nimbly, where the financial might of Goliaths once lumbered unopposed. Meanwhile, consumer loyalty is shifting, with burgeoning openness to the allure of newcomers unmarred by past failings. In an age where a company's reputation can be sullied at internet speed, the likelihood of a reputation crisis has soared from a mere fifth in 1990 to a staggering 82% chance in 2010. The once predictable gradients of business clout have been disrupted. In the domains of commerce, just as in politics and warfare, the advantage increasingly tips toward the agile, the adaptable, the smaller players in power's grand game. Part 8. The Underdogs of Faith, Philanthropy and Information. New Challengers to Traditional Institutions. As the edifice of established power continues to crack and crumble, the tremors are felt far beyond the political arena, rippling through the realms of religion, philanthropy and media. In the spiritual sphere, the monolithic presence of venerable religious institutions like the Catholic Church is facing a groundswell of fragmentation. A vibrant spectrum of evangelical, Pentecostal and charismatic Protestant congregations are drawing the faithful into their folds, offering alternatives to conventional dogmas and ecclesiastic authority. The philanthropic domain is similarly undergoing a shift, as individuals step into roles traditionally occupied by major charities. By 2012, 81 American billionaires had committed to the Giving Pledge, promising to channel the bulk of their wealth into charitable endeavors. Notable figures like Bill and Melinda Gates have engineered their own foundations, diversifying the landscape once dominated by a handful of established entities. The 2010 Haiti earthquake marked a watershed moment in citizen-driven philanthropy, as countless individuals leveraged their cell phones to propel millions in aid, dispatching donations through simple text messages. These micro-donations represent an emerging force, channeling funds with a precision that bypasses and diminishes the influence of large charitable institutions. The bastion of media is not immune to this seismic shift, The proliferation of the internet and the ubiquity of smartphones equipped with cameras have empowered billions to document, produce, and disseminate their stories, diluting the stronghold once maintained by legacy media outlets. This democratization is starkly evident in the decline of traditional journalism in the United States, with 15 newspapers vanishing each year between 2006 and 2011, leading to a 43% contraction of the industry since the dawn of the new millennium. The information once curated and released through a handful of gatekeepers now flows freely from the hands of anyone with a smartphone. As we've explored the metamorphosis of power through technological and societal lenses, it becomes apparent that these currents have profound implications for the shape of things to come. In the subsequent sections, we'll cast our gaze forward contemplating the potential consequences and opportunities 
arising from the redistribution of power in our contemporary landscape. Part 9. The Double-Edged Sword of Diminishing Power, Freedom and Instability The gradual decline of power brings an array of liberties and boons for the global populace. It ushers in a more liberated society, enabling citizens to articulate their grievances, allowing ideas to circulate without restraint, fostering market competition that smiles upon consumers. Yet these winds are twinned with perils, serious risks that loom over the newfound freedoms. Chief among the dangers is chaos and discontent. A key duty of government is the provision of stability, a promise of predictability that underpins our daily lives. Power is the linchpin in this guarantee, and its decline ushers in vulnerability, leaving even well-established democracies scrambling to respond to the rapid transformations of our era. Globally, the lack of a potent international authority means that critical agreements on pressing issues like climate change become Herculean tasks. When power is fleeting, entities across society lose efficiency. The storied institutions we depend on, political factions, business corporations, religious organizations, academic centers, are reservoirs of learned wisdom gained over time, a valuable commodity lacking in new power holders. Moreover, such instability deters long-haul commitments. Why plan for a future clouded in uncertainty? This logic compels players to favor immediate rewards over extended endeavors. A company facing an unclear horizon might rush products to the market today rather than refine them for tomorrow. Consequently, power's erosion chips away at the incentives to invest in enduring matters. Amidst a cacophony of self-appointed journalists, discerning vital news from trivial chatter becomes a Sisyphean task. This precipitous landscape skews towards low-effort engagements, clicking a like, sending a dollar with a single text, or signing digital petitions. These acts drain resources from Moore's substantive acts of change. A physician, for instance, could bring tangible aid to a crisis zone, working with doctors without borders far more than by lending digital support. The diminishing of power, much like any force of change, arrives with its blessings and its curses. A reminder that freedom and order often dance in delicate balance. Part 10. Navigating the New Landscape embracing positive change and guarding against risk. In the wake of power's dissolution, how do we harness the beneficial currents while shielding ourselves from the undertow? The key lies in a fundamental shift of perspective regarding the balance of power. Take, for instance, the discourse surrounding the power dynamics of nations like the United States and China. Often we're captivated by the notion of China's ascension overlooking the broader narrative that the authority of nation-states, particularly the formidable ones, is waning, with China's power merely eroding more slowly than America's. A pivotal aspect of this perspective shift is skepticism towards those Jacob Burkhardt termed terrible simplifiers, figures who manipulate emotions rather than offer substantive arguments. In an era where weakened institutions and dwindling attention spans fuel political exasperation, such demagogues find fertile ground. Vigilance against their rhetoric is critical. It requires unwavering dedication to rational discourse and a refusal to succumb to their sway. Finally, revitalizing political engagement is paramount. At the heart of faltering international cooperation, such as the stagnation in addressing climate change, is the frailty of political leadership at the national level. By reforming political parties to match the interconnected nature of our times, making them more adaptable and less hierarchical, we can restore their efficacy and credibility. In doing so, political entities must strive to be seen as transparent, accountable and indispensable shining as beacons that can both inspire and mobilize the public. With parties buttressed by the trust and active participation of the community, our leaders will be better equipped with vital instruments to tackle the multifaceted challenges that define our century. Final Summary In essence, the book reveals a paradox of our times. 
The dilution of power has concurrently unshackled a multitude of freedoms while also unleashing a surge of unpredictability into the world. As power disperses among an ever-growing throng, we find ourselves at a juncture that demands introspection. Societies must weigh the merits of this more democratized distribution of influence against the potential advantages of a more centralized command. In this delicate balance lies the shaping of our future, where the choices we make about how we handle power can lead to flourishing freedoms or precarious instability. Thank you for joining me today on this journey of learning and discovery as we explored the insights of another thought-provoking book in our growing library of knowledge. If you've enjoyed our time together, please take a moment to follow our podcast, give us a five-star rating, and share 20-minute books with other knowledge seekers. Your support truly means a lot. Don't forget to join me again in the next episode, where we will delve into another enriching book. Until then, happy reading and happy listening.